mull on my arms. I've just had a blood test done. Now, which is incredible that all those photographs are actually on that little memory stick. Don't get emotional, Neil. It was only memories. What's happening? And, uh, and, uh, well, so yeah, we're uh, we're now in what's going to be the seating area. So uh, the doorway behind. We're having a Russia walk, a Russia, Russia, Russia walk. So, um, I think by the time this one goes out, ev everybody will have seen the zombie abandoned film set wood. And then we found the trailer, didn't we, and stuff, innit? It looks, yeah. looks a bit scary, doesn't it? Hey, Pro proper bit of urban exploring. So, um, one to remember, isn't it? Oh, it's a bit chilly, isn't it? So, yeah, bit of a rushy walk and um, walk around the block onto a bit of a green area with Ali. I've seen you more time in the last few days than have in the last couple of years, haven't we? Yeah. A lot of magpies about. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, Lee, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret. Go on, Lee. Not sure. Never to be told. Right, so I've got a bit of cotton wool on my arms. I've just had a blood test done, checking my checking for diabetes, which I'm positive is going to, or more than positive is going to be okay. Also cholesterol and everything at the same time. Blood pressure, all fine. Um, so whatever this little bleed on the eye that I've got is, who knows? It's probably, like I said to the um, optician, I've been doing quite a lot of physical stuff, um, lifting and all the rest of it, and probably just. Literally overstrained myself. Right, another one out of the way. Another appointment out of the it's way. A very, very, very sunny day, and in here, <coughs> I've got an archive of negatives, papers, and prints from um, I think 1991, 1992 to 1994, 1995. Uh, when I was a press photographer for a local paper, which I've mentioned before, I'm going to wave and hand uh, wave my copyright to all of these images, uh, including um, some digital images that I started to take in 2013 to about 2017, 18 um, of Altingham Town being developed and things like that, and they're going to a local historical archive. Um, so for future generations, I've got a complete snapshot of what life was like, including, I think, virtually every single newspaper that my work went in at the time. So the archive people should be able to collaborate my photographs with the story in the paper. Um, it's quite sad that this is happening, but it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. I started, um, I digitised everything, I think about 2018, 2019, and somebody said, oh, you should do a book on this because there's an old archive, there's a whole book could have been written. And um, unfortunately, two people have died since I started to do this work. And before time runs out for me, I need to get these down to um, a library where the, lo the local um, historical study centre is and um, get them in the archive. Right, where I'm going is awful for parking. Oh, wait, right. Oh. Big folder of negatives. A box of prints. And a bag of newspapers. And everything. This is remarkable, isn't it? Everything is all backed up onto that one little memory stick. So if you know the area that I live in, I'm just heading towards a place called Sale Waterside. Um, a bit better than this car park here, right? Thank you. Uh, I'm just parked in the Sainsbury's car park and going to make my way through Sale. I've not been to Sale for a long time, uh, which is a small town just outside Altrincham. Oh. Uh, I have no idea how, how well this town's doing, as I say. Um, he used to come here, mm, not often, often, but now and again. Um, they had quite a few privately owned shops rather than um, your nationals. Oh, 
local um, tidy up groups all these stickers are all from disposable vapes it's worse than chewing gum apparently um, at least they were stuck on a bin which is something oh uh, yeah oh. right hello pigeon you having a bit of pizza what are you doing what are you doing is it pizza from the night before? Right, so... This is sort of the entrance. We're coming in. I'm probably not going to film in here. I'm not too sure whether you're allowed to film in here or not. Um, but basically you've got an entrance into um, the library in the town hall. And this local study centre, apparently, is in the library in here. Uh, local history. Uh, library and council information service right I'm not too sure what the filming situation is going to be well, I'm going to flip my camera off um, here now okay, I think so that's part of history all done um, so this is the Trafford local study centre um, they've got like a quite a big archive of all things Trafford um, and it's just going to be nice for Sorry. <laughs> that's okay um, my my items now which is incredible that all those photographs are actually on that little memory stick and uh, so if you come here the people will help you with things they also do um family history and you, you can research a family tree here and all the old books and everything so if you're in trafford or if you're not in trafford come to sail waterside into the library they've got some um yeah fantastic stuff here so we're just photographing the content uh, oh, look at this here. It's like, a, it's like an old shop, isn't it? Look at it. Look at this here. Isn't that good, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to show the details. Uh, I've got my disclosure that I've waived all the copyright, and um, who knows? In a hundred years' time when somebody's looking for local history they'll come across those as I say I was at one stage going to um, is that touch? I'm not too sure about that. Um, getting everything into a book but time as they say time ran out so end of an era that's it done and dusted don't get emotional Neil it was only memories. Something that I was just saying to the lady who would give the archives to. So if you've got friends or family <clears throat> who are suffering from dementia, if you make a memory album or a memory book, it will trigger memories in people's um, minds. So even though somebody with dementia is very forgetful and they can't remember the present, the now, they often can remember the then. So I was just saying to the lady, um, where I've just done my handover, that, oh, where am I going here? I'm going up the wrong road. Um, when I started to digitize these and put them onto like local Facebook groups, 2018, 19, the memories it was triggering was remarkable. Um, and if you at home, as say, if you've got a, a, a friend, a family member who's suffering from dementia, grab your old photographs and create an album with photographs from 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and it will trigger memories on anybody that's got dementia. Um, it's a wonderful thing, absolutely wonderful thing. Okay. Right. Good deed of the day done. All right, so I'm just de coat hangering. Yeah, if you watched the, the vlog the other day, I've been getting all these shirts out of the um, what I love this shirt. Um, out of my wardrobe, I'm just gonna de coat hanger these and a few other items of clothing. I'm gonna get a vacuum bag, and all being well, they'll compress down to a very small, I'm hoping, quite a small space that might fit into a suitcase. I found my old fishing jacket. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that there. A little bit of a waistcoat. 
put my um, Discordia and other items in here. I, yeah, who knows? Years time, maybe I'll get back out. Um, get get coarse fishing again. Go and get go get some big fish, shall we? Right, fingers crossed. The last sort out of my wardrobe. So basically. The clothes that I'm going to have left in the wardrobe are what I'm taking to the nurseries. So um, if you're watching a few weeks ago, I bought half a dozen of these shirts, all these like checkered shirts, and I've got, got quite into them. Um, so these are all quite new. Um, I've got rid of even more, some more clothes now. So I need to get to a clothes bank uh, and get rid of a number of items. I've even gone through my sock and underwear drawer. <laughs> I won't go into detail. Uh, and I had a big, big sort out and clear out and thrown away a number of items out of there. Um, and basically, I've now got into this bag here uh, clothes that I'm not going to be taking with me when I return to Lincolnshire. So, all being well, I'm hoping that these, I'm going to suck the air out, will compress down. Um, and that should be my last clothes packing for um for what I'm leaving here in Manchester. heavy ah, there you go that's um <sighs> that done I was going to put some of these so I have a little um, um, weekend suitcase I was going to put everything into so I've got a needle on it I think yeah, I've got a needle on it um, but decided not to do that I wasn't like physically pack a case um, so that's it, another end of an era over. Um, all done and dusted. And uh, as I say, the clock to my return to Lincolnshire is going by very, very, very quickly. And a lot going on at the nurseries when I get back as well. There's um, a lot of changes going on. All in the right direction, I hasten. This is, a, this is another weird box, it's wound Sandra up. So this box here, I've kept um, because it was a bit of a um, a pandemic box, sort of. So that's a phone book. Plus, we don't need all of these. And some. And the reason why I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape all of this. Oh, look here, look here, look, look here, look. I'm going to put all of these into a box and I'm going to look I've even kept like what was going on in Aldi and an IKEA catalog the IKEA catalog they used to uh, they used to give away more of them IKEA catalogs and they sold holy bibles apparently a machine mark and a face mask and what else have we got in here yeah an A to Z and some other things papers and stuff and the reason why I'm going to do this I'm going to tape it all up and I'm just going to just put on the box COVID um, and put it away and then one day when I'm not here whoever finds it whether it be one of my children or whatever they'll either throw it all away or in 20 years time 30 years time 40 years time whenever um, it's what happened during the pandemic, the COVID couple of years where we went through a, yeah, wasn't it mad, wasn't it? Just, um, and it feels like it was, it never happened.
but yeah the covid box anyway i'm going to put that into there right i think i've got two vacuum bags left um i think oh, then there now my, my old photographic business uh so i need to see sandra whether she wants me to order any for her and what time is it now and i'm going to get these old clothes i might whip down to a clothes bank now and get shut of some them. of you some of you are <laughs> going to recognize this very handsome young man here <laughs> well, what's your name again? Stephen. Stephen. and uh where are we we're at the hive uh and we're about 10 months in now i think to a renovation project so uh, yeah neil's come to have uh, to have a sneak peek i think you're probably the first with a camera so right yeah. so if you people have been watching in fact if i try and remember i will try and remember to put a link up here from a video i did just over a year ago with these well, two we're guys. 25 seconds in if you don't see this like reminder 25 seconds in like <laughs> there's something wrong with your memory no because i've got i know you've got you want to see what else is happening before this clip oh, but enough, yeah 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 no it's, it's a long a one busy yeah 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 no i've just been um it's a full full archive right so as i say all being well i'm going to put a card up there but wait till you see what's going on here this is just come on to explain what's happening and, uh, and yeah, well so yeah we're uh, we're now in what's going to be the seating area so uh, the doorway behind us didn't exist um the paneling uh, we've done all the paneling uh, ourselves um and the flooring and everything so every single thing that you see in here um, with exception of the actual electric uh, wiring uh, we've done ourselves um, so yeah it's, it's been a very very long 10 months but as you can see there's still there's still ladders still dirty clothing there's still bits of wood and tip stuff ready to go um, but yeah it's come on nicely and I'd say we're about two weeks away now maybe fingers crossed uh, for completion I'll be, I'll, I may never see you again after two weeks oh uh, you'll have to make the special trip down let's have a look up here so these were two former in fact from memory this one used to be a bit of an antique shop or was that one out of the French polish uh, so yeah so I think in the 90s or something like that so this used to be um, the antique shop and I think that was like a bookshop and a DIY shop at one point. So we've got um, pictures on our website. Um, so if you have a slight plug here, if you want to go to hivestores.uk, um, on our homepage there's a link there and it'll show you the old photos basically. But um, going even further back, which is the one that I really love from 1950s and 60s, the shop that we're in now used to be the um, a greengrocers and um, just like a general uh, provision store. Um, and then the shop on the other side. Which we can let's go have a walk through here. Look at this. Um, this used to be the bakery and uh, confectioners. Um, so this is what's going to now be the main um, cafe bar. So uh, behind here is where we shall be serving the drinks from. Um, and again, all the mirrors, all the wood paneling, the floor, the bar build, every single thing. Um, here we've done ourselves um, building partition walls, knocking walls down uh, and stuff like that. So it, it's been a, a very, very busy 10 months, but uh, yeah, it's finally getting there now. So the reason why I've, I've come back is those who've been watching my videos will notice when I've been clearing the house that I've ended up with a few boxes of old bottles of various descriptions. And I just thought it'd be great to come and give you these guys yeah, yeah. give you these guys give you these old <laughs> bottles and whether you get 10p 5p or clean them up or whatever honestly um, yeah we've been selling bottles uh, the old bottles that people have dug up uh, for years i think a lot of what we sell people have uh, we've got from people that have dug up from like lindo common uh, in wilmslow and stuff like that um, but they're always practical pop some dry flowers in there some fresh flowers um, i think neil said himself fill with sand as well like decorative sands and pebbles and stuff like that there's loads of different uses for them so i know i know on ash farm in hale just off shea lane i know where, the, where there's a victorian bottle dump and the farmer uncovered it by accident and nobody ever knew about it so we used to go oh, really? digging i've only got a few bottles left now some of them are chipped and cracked and some of them aren't and yeah. whatever and you'll throw some of them away but um but I think what we'll, I think what we'll do we'll, we'll organise to come back and I think we'll do another dedicated video of you. Absolutely, honestly, we can't wait to have it where the shelves are filled with like the alcohol, um, you know, the fridges are filled, the coffee machines in, this, the counters, so everything's really, really dusty. So 
do excuse uh, Oh no, I love this. So, this is proper, proper hardcore antique So yeah, these are um, all proper antique pieces. Like these will have our sort of like pastries and stuff stacked on there on display in the uh, either on the counter or in the fridge. Can I, okay, just go behind there and do a, a, a view? Absolutely, yeah. So this okay, is sort yeah. of behind the bar. At, but, oh, you've got the fridges and everything here, haven't you? So. Yes. And then looking, this is going to be, I, I am so happy for you both um, to have had that vision. And you had a fire, didn't you? Yeah, luckily it happened before we <laughs> signed for the lease. So th these two shops here most recently, um, again, this is um, on our website, I think. But um, yeah, they were, they were filled with, it, I won't exactly, it's not even an exaggeration. There must have been hundreds of thousands of CDs and DVDs. Um, it was a guy who had an Irish music uh, website uh, and telesales channel. It was floor to ceiling, up against the wall, so all the walls were damp. He wasn't in here for months and months and months. Uh, there was no circulation, so it was really, really bad. But then a fire broke out, and luckily because the brickwork was so poor, the smoke was coming through the, the brickwork before the fire proper took um, supply. So yeah, it, uh, it was very, very touch and go as to whether we was actually going to get our hands on the building. Oh, um, wow. But yeah, we're here to laugh about it now. I think you've done it. Um, what, what you, but you had a, um, a fundraiser, a crowdfunding pro project as well, didn't you? Yeah, so um, I don't like asking for help. There's a chap who's in the, um, the, the courtyard now um, getting a drink with his wife. He's been offering for months and months and months to help with like DIY and stuff like that and I just don't like accepting help, I don't like asking for help um, and that comes um, to sort of like skills and to money so it took a lot for us to pluck up the courage to do a crowdfunder. Um, it kind of like went against everything that you know I, I believed in myself personally at the time but Honestly, we were blown away. I think on the actual crowdfunder website, I think 12,000 was raised and then about another 4,000 cash. Um, so yeah, and you know what, without that money, um, it, it, it'd probably take another year for us to do and to get started doing what we've been doing. So yeah, we were very, very lucky to have amazing customers, neighbors um, and support as well, family members as well. Um, and even like local businesses, like all the floor tiles, all the tiles in the toilet, um, they've come from um, CTC Tiles, which is a, a local auction business. Um, and they did a mega uh, a mega deal for us and so, all the woodwork. So I think actually there's a photograph sort of video we're putting down the floor and in there somewhere. So that's yeah, all yeah. the uh, time in case you know what's going on. So all chaos here, but this is, I mean, to, to have had the vision, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a bit like fatherhood, isn't it? It's a bit like wanting a baby and to yeah. go, go and conceive the baby. And I think, like, whilst we're on the uh, the baby analogy, like my uh, my niece is currently uh, got a six week old baby, and her nana is doing a heading because she's interfering. Do this, do this, don't do this, <laughs> don't do that. And I think that's probably the same as why I don't like accepting help is because I want to do it my yeah, way. Yeah. Um, and you know, develop it the way that I want it to be. So yeah, maybe that's why I've not been uh, been accepting help and stuff like that. Um, but yes, it's uh, it's very very nearly done. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, I'm going to wrap this here. I'll do a video outside on my way out, and then I'm going to arrange to pop over sometime next week. I think. Excellent. Amazing. Yeah. Say Thank you very much. Say, and say, goodbye. Say, say say goodbye in a different language. Uh, oh oh oh. Uh, Bislama. Ah, because you've been to Morocco. <laughs> A year or so ago, these were just all old shops that he was explaining. And obviously, the shutters are all down and all the rest of it, but absolutely chuffed to bits for it. It's um, all going good. Um, yeah, and I've got a home for those bottles as well. So I'll pop over next week, probably do another catch up from there. Right, I'm going to wrap the video off here now. If you've enjoyed that, you know to do, give the video a thumbs up if you'd like to, and um, look after yourself. And remember, stay tuned in for another video coming your way from the campsite warden.